Exodus 15. Exodus 15. It's a uh, it's a song that Moses sang. But in verse three, I'd like you just to look at verse three, Exodus fifteen three. He says, "The Lord is a man of war." You see that? Amen. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is His name. The Lord is a man of Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you for respecting God's word. Thank God we have a copy of it. Amen. Amen. Uh, millions of Ukrainians don't have it. They haven't seen it yet. The Lord is a man of war. I'll get. I'll take ten, ten minutes. Okay, ten minutes, and then we'll uh, let Pastor preach. Now, I want to hear some English preaching. <laughs> and, uh, uh, ten minutes. The Lord's a man of war. There's a war going on. Now, me directly. Yes, there is a war. It's the biggest war since World War II. Okay. We have a linear front that's over 1,200 kilometers. Let's call that 870 miles. 870 miles of a front. Okay, it literally is the single biggest battlefront since World War II. All right. Uh, the conditions are prehistoric. The conditions are archaic. At the beginning of the war, we had what's called the International Legion, which is a legal <gasps> battalion of foreign fighters. Americans, Canadians, Brits, Aussies, Kiwis, anybody that wanted to come could enlist in the International Legion legally, okay, and be a legal part of the Ukrainian Armed Services. So they're not mercenaries, okay, and fight, okay. And by mid March, we had over 30,000 foreigners. That's huge. Okay, we have about, I can't officially say this, but I'll tell you what it is, we, we have roughly 5,000 now. We have roughly 5,000 now. Not because they've been attritioned out, and yes, some of them have died, technically eight already, Americans, in addition to some British and other foreign nationals. Uh, we've officially lost eight Americans uh, there. Uh, the rest have... Um, um, uh, withdrew, resigned, because the American system of warfare is not that. And so everything that they were trained with supply lines and, and the methodology of warfare is inapplicable. And so they've honestly, brave men, and there's, we have some brave women, we have, a, we have an American woman, former Navy medic who's there serving like 10 feet from where I'm at, break out. Um, but the system of warfare is so radically different that they, they just don't do well with it. And so they end up leaving the, leaving the theater. Um, because it's so primitive, it's so archaic, it, it is so radically different than, than what they've been trained and geared and, and, and everything as, as, as American fighters. Uh, they fight valiantly. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've got a lot of respect for anybody that takes up a gun and because this is a moral issue. This is black and white, friends. This is right or wrong. This is not regime change. This is not politics. This is, this is not about oil. This is literally about one country genocide trying to erase the existence of another country. And if there's ever been a time in our history, and if there's ever been a time since World War II when there's been a moral issue on the table, this is the time. This, this, this is the time. Okay? So there's a war, all right? It says that the Lord is a man of war. Okay? Uh, you remember, God created the angels, right? Amen. And the chief, the anointed, Lucifer, decided to do what? I want to be like the Most High. Now, notice that he didn't kill anybody, didn't, didn't, didn't steal from anybody, didn't go commit adultery. The Bible says in his heart, he had said, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Five I wills in his heart. God saw the heart, and God did what? God, God, God went to war. God went to war. Because his eyes are pure, the Bible says in the back, than to behold evil. Okay? His eyes are pure. Okay? God can't look upon that. Okay? So he removed Lucifer as the anointed cherub, and removed Lucifer from the heavens and cast him down where? Down to here. Right down here. This is his kingdom. He's called the prince of the... Right here. Okay, 
this is his kingdom. Is that God's kingdom? This is his kingdom. Okay? So that means that since that point in time, okay, which is why he went to the Garden of Eden and, and, and said what to Eve? Yay? God said? I mean, are you sure? Are you sure? And he began his war against you and I. He began his war against our souls. He began a war against all that God loves. And he continues to fight daily, night and day. But friends, I want to reassure you this morning, okay? The Lord is a man of war. Amen. 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 I love Jesus. Amen. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Redeemer. Amen. I am under the blood Amen. of the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ. But the yeah. Lord, Jehovah God, is a man of war, right. the Bible says. Okay? And when it comes time to battle through this soul, there was a war going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And when you got saved six months ago, there was a war going on. Yeah. And before you became born again, there was a war going on. Yeah. There was a war going on for the souls of men and women across the street, across the city, across the state, across the country, and across the globe. Yeah. Okay? Thank you, folks. Okay? Thank you, Captain's Point. A while back, you'll send us a thousand bucks. Right? Thousand dollars you sent. That's a huge sacrifice. Okay? That bought so much medicine. Okay? That bought so much stuff. Okay? And he sees the pictures. I mean, and, and I don't share all the pictures because they're like hundreds every day. You know, I'm not going to flood the guy out. But, <laughs> he sees it. Because my mom always said, proofs in the pudding. <laughs> show me the stuff. Show it to me, right? Yeah. Show it. Don't talk. Just, just show it. Amen. But friends, listen, <clears throat> thank you that you want us to reach Ukraine, especially during the war, because everyone else left. And I'm not judging for that. Who are thou to judge another man's servant? Is that not written? I don't pass judgment on those guys. We stay. I'm Irish. I'm done. Amen. <laughs> okay? We stay. We stay. Because there's a cause. Because there's a war. Because the Lord is a man of war. Amen. And friends, do you expect us to reach Ukraine? I expect you to reach this area over here. Amen. I expect you to reach your next door neighbor. I expect you to reach the people across the street from you. I expect you to reach the people that you see at the grocery store. I expect, I expect from you pictures. Amen. You think this is going to get any better if we just continue to sit here? Okay? This is 2023. Last year you had 365 days of opportunities to lead somebody to Christ. How many people were leading the Lord last year? How many people? Preacher, don't count. <laughs> He's supposed to do that, amen? That's the thing. We're all supposed to. Okay? So if you didn't, why not? Honestly, if you didn't, why not? I'll tell you why not. I'll tell you why not. Because you're afraid. You are. You're afraid. You're afraid of what they're going to say. You're afraid they're going to give you a question you don't know the answer to. You're afraid of what they're going to think. You're, you're afraid. You're afraid. I'm afraid. He's afraid. Amen. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, Amen. but a power of love and of sound mind. Amen. Okay? If you ask God for some of the Holy Spirit boldness, talk to that person. If you won't, someone else will. I mean, where are we at in 2023 in the United States of America? Where are we? With an administration that can't even tell us what a woman is or is not? I mean, really? You know how difficult it is for me to be an American overseas? It's not easy. At all. Because Ukrainians have a lot of stuff wrong. But you know what? They still believe one man and one woman ought to be married. Amen. They have only two genders, male and female. Amen. Okay? The Lord is a man of war. There's a war going on right now for your community. There's a war going on right now for your household. There's a war going on right now for your mind and for your soul and for your kids and for your spouse. There is a war going on. And the enemy will not stop. He's committed to his task. Are we committed as believers this morning? Mm. Will we take up the cross and say, my life doesn't mean anything to me? I was at a hotel not far from here, okay, swamped with people from Colorado. Some kind of hockey thing going on here. 
And I thought, my Lord, these people drove from one state to another state. So the 15-year-old Johnny or whoever he is, and they're spending hundreds of dollars at the hotel and hundreds of thousands of dollars on all this hockey equipment. I played hockey. That stuff ain't cheap. And they're doing what on Sunday? And we wonder why we're where we're at? Hey, trust me. I love hockey. Okay, that is God's sport. Okay? <laughs> listen now. Listen now. Listen now. Okay? All right. It's, 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 it's Bible. It's Bible. Revelation chapter 5. Look it up. <laughs> Around the throne, it was what? As a sea of glass. glass. <laughs> Amen. 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 I'm telling you, that the Lord is a man of war. Because there is war going on. Okay? I can't reach your neighbor. I can't reach your family. I can't reach your friends. I can't reach the people you work with. I can't reach the people that you're in contact with every single day. I can't reach them. And it it's not his job. It's not his job. Ephesians chapter 4, look it up. His job is for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Well, how come preacher don't go door knocking? Because he's not supposed to go door knocking. He's who equip you to go door knocking. It's not his job. Preacher, would you come by on Thursday and talk to the cousin? She's in town and she needs to know the Lord. Well, good, you get enough Jesus and talk to your cousin then. He's got enough on his plate. You gotta dig into the Bible to get stuff to give to people, God's people. There's a war going on. Amen. Yes, it is. And the Lord is a man of war. Amen. And we're killing ourselves. I mean, that's, that, that's the problem. I mean, it's all self-inflicted. Mm. We bring it on ourselves. Amen. By the stuff that we see, the stuff that we watch, the stuff that we do or don't do. Amen. It's self-inflicted. When I first got saved, I was a student in college at the University of Arizona. Wildcat, that's the real school here in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after I got saved, I, I, uh, I uh, uh, enrolled in Bible school at night. Well, I continued to go to school during the day. But I wanted to know who saved me. I didn't know anything about God. I grew up Roman Catholic. I knew nothing about the Bible. I knew nothing about God. I wanted to know him better. So I enrolled in, in, in Bible school. I remember the you know, first class, first semester, Old Testament survey. Mm -hmm. I began to read the Old Testament survey through the class. And it, just, it, just, it, 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 it just boggled my little mind that Israel could have everything. Amen. They could have the Shekinah glory. They had the temple. They had the priesthood. They had the presence of Almighty God right there. Right. And what they do? The Bible says they went a whoring after other gods. Amen. That's the book. I don't mean being vulgar from the pole, but that, 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 that's how God described it. Amen. That's how vulgar and violent it is. That's right. Yeah. And I thought, how could they do that? All that God gave them. I mean, I, mean, I don't understand that. Look at all gave them. God, God gave them everything. Amen. You're a peculiar people. You're, you're, you're a chosen people. A royal priesthood. I mean, you guys are special to me. I brought you out of nowhere. Amen. Amen. Didn't he bring you and me out of nowhere? Didn't he find us in the pit of bondage? Didn't he find us under our eyeballs in sin and vileness and in wickedness and corruptedness? Isn't that not where he found you and I if you've been born again? And why did he do it? Why did he do it? Ephesians chapter 2. Why did he do it? For the praise of His glory for the ages to come. The praise of His glory for the ages to come. You and me, the redeemed, are going to be on God's top shelf for all the ages. And He says, this is what I did. You're God's trophy case. Amen. Amen. Did you know that? You're God's trophy case for ages to come. Amen. Amen. But there's a war going on. The Lord is a man of war. And darkness will not stop fighting. Amen. We get people going down. We get people falling. We get good people falling. Good people falling. 
just having someone close to me fall apart. There's a war out there. Oh, the soul. There's a war out there for your mind. Amen. There is. There's a war out there for what's up in here. Amen. What does James chapter 1 say, starting in verse 13 and verse 14 and verse 15? I can quote the Russians for you. That's not going to help me very much. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll give you the reference so you know where it is, okay? <clears throat> Sin has to do what? It, it, it has to take root yeah. in yeah. the mind. Yes. And then it sprouts. Mm -hmm. And it brings forth what? James said. Death. Death. Death in the Bible is separation. Amen. In all names, it's not cessation of existence, it's just separation. You just got separated from God. The Lord's a man of war. You want to be on the other side of him? I don't. Oh, but Jesus, oh, but Jesus. Yeah, what about Jesus? Jesus is not your granddaddy. He's just going to overlook that sin and say, oh, it's okay. That's right. Do you know what he had to suffer to pay for that thing? Right. You know the price he had to pay? We sing this morning about the blood, amen. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. But where'd the blood come from? He was bruised for our iniquities. He was wounded for our transgressions. Oh, because there was a war. So this morning, friends, I want you to think about that. Am I a soldier of the cross? Our Lord is a man of war. Let's take up arms. Amen. Let's take back some of God's kingdom. Amen. Let's remind the devil where his place is. Amen. What's his future? Anybody? His future is where? Hell. The lake. No, not hell. The lake, the lake of fire. Gone. Mm -hmm. Gone. Amen. 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 Okay. There is coming a day. Amen. 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 There's coming a day. But until then, brothers, until then, sisters, we are in the trenches. Amen. I've been in some trenches lately. That's not a pretty place to be. It is frigidly cold. You can't get warm. It is yucky, filthy, yucky, bad stuff. So you got to walk over somebody that you're never going to get over. But what about spiritually? We have the same work we want to. See, this is our medical clinic right here. This is our mass unit right here. We're going to patch you guys up today. Tomorrow, we expect you to take up arms. Amen. And go attack hell. Amen. Go attack hell. Amen. Because Jesus promised what? That even the gates, right, Amen. will not prevail. Amen. He cannot hold you out. Amen. He can bluff you. He can bluff you. He'll bluff. Amen. I'd like to see that guy in Vegas, man. He'd make a million. Because he's a bluffer. <laughs> That's all he is. He's just a bluffer. He walks about as a lion, right? Seeking whom he may devour. But you ain't got no teeth. He'll gum you to death. <laughs> <laughs> because he can't get you, brother. Not if you're saved. He can't get you. Right. Amen. Right. He can right. bark and growl and he can nip. That's all he can do. He's he, he just a little lap dog. Nippy, nippy, nippy. Yeah. You're untouchable. Yeah. 